Hey guys, thanks for coming to visit Anthony and Will Do Disney. Uh, if you like what we do here and you'd like to see our, more of our videos and hear about them, feel free to write down below, hit subscribe, and hit that bell icon so that you can hear when we do new videos. So today is gonna be the first in a, in a series of videos that we're gonna do in regards to planning your Disney vacation. Um, Walt Disney World is a complicated place. There are a lot of factors and a lot of things that you need to take into account. So the best place to start is when are you gonna go? Now I understand that a lot of families don't have a choice as to when they're gonna be able to go down. You have things to take into account, like when are the kids out of school? When can you take vacation? Um, just when is it the time to make a trip like this? So I'm gonna preface with, regardless of when you go, you're gonna have an amazing time. You just need to plan it out a little differently. When you have the ability to choose when you're gonna go down, it makes your day a little easier and it makes it so that you can maximize the time you're going. And also you can see some really cool stuff. Walt Disney World is always doing something different throughout the year. So you have different festivals, you have different holidays you can go to, and we're gonna go through that right now. Now when I talk to my clients, the first thing I ask is what time of year are you gonna to wanna to be able to go? So we're gonna break this down into the four seasons, fall, winter, spring, and summer. So in the fall, you've got things like the Food and Wine Festival in Epcot, which is probably Epcot's largest festival. You're gonna find around the uh, water over in Epcot, food booths, beverages that you can actually go around and taste and see different cultures through their food. It's actually a really awesome time. It's the time of year I really like to go. You're also gonna be able to see Halloween. When it comes to Halloween, Magic Kingdom is really where you're gonna see most of it. Different characters in costume, the decorations are fantastic. Also, Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is kind of a must do if you're down there during this time because it's just such a different experience. Looking at the winter, in the winter you've got things like the Festival of the Holidays, which is a huge Epcot festival. They do around in each country. You're gonna see each country's representation of what the holidays are in that country. From Germany to the UK to Canada. You're gonna see different identification of Santa Claus. You're gonna see different things that maybe Morocco does around the holidays that we really wouldn't think about. You're also gonna see the Magic Kingdom at Christmas, which is just beautiful. You have Mickey's uh, Very Merry Christmas Party, where you get free cookies and hot cocoa throughout the park. You're gonna have all the different decorations, Christmas trees, and all of the resorts, the main resorts around the, the monorail and around Magic Kingdom. Just a beautiful time of year to go, realistically. Now we're gonna move into spring. When you move into spring, now you have more festivals in Epcot and not as much moving over into Magic Kingdom and the other parks. In Epcot, you're gonna start off with Festival of the Arts, which, is a, which they focus on different types of art, anything from sidewalk painting, to the culinary arts, to dance, to music. And the biggest thing that I loved about it, because this was my first year going, was all the different vendors that did their own artwork. We actually have some signed pieces from this past time, which were just stunning. I mean, and the people that we met there that did the art, just fantastic people. It's actually really cool talking to them. You also have Flower and Garden Festival, which again, Epcot's known for its food. Around World Showcase Lagoon, you have the different booths that have the different foods and so forth. But you also have the life-size topiaries. You've got different um, gardening exhibits where you can learn how to create gardens. And they have the giant butterfly exhibit, which is just an amazing walk through uh, tented area with butterflies just loose. And you'll just see people in there just taking pictures of it because it's actually just beautiful to look at. Next, you're gonna go into the summer. Here's what I'm gonna say about the summer. The summer is the busiest time in Walt Disney World. This is the time of year that most families can make it down because of school schedules. Kids are out of school, so they have the ability to get down there. So if you're gonna go in the summer, you just need to mentally prepare yourself that it's gonna be busier than what you expected, and it's gonna be busier than most people actually like. Uh, me personally, if I have a choice, I'm not gonna go in the summer, um, especially around those uh, 4th of July holiday weekends and so forth. Now let's break this down by months. So. In each season, there's typically a month or two that you can actually get away with and even see lower crowd volumes. So in the fall, and this is all from personal experience, in the fall, you're gonna have September, typically after Labor Day, through October, and October before Halloween. Barring any events or special things that are going on, those months are fantastic to go down to. September's great because a lot of the kids just went back to school. People just finished their summer vacation, so you're gonna find lower park, uh, lower park crowds. October is just a gorgeous time of year. A little busier than September, but still nothing compared to some other times during the year. In the winter, I find January and part of February 
January, typically after the first week, you're gonna find lower volumes. Again, because people just had their winter breaks. Um, it's also a little colder, so a lot of people don't travel that time of year. And I find the first week or so of February pretty stable as well. Um, before Valentine's Day primarily, which is the 14th, but a couple days before that is probably your safest bet crowd-wise. Now in the spring, I personally like March and April. Um, March because it's my birthday month. Um, <clears throat> but you're also, again, I find lower crowds that time of year. Same thing with the first part of April. April, I find, again, it's nice temperatures, to be completely honest with you, and I find the crowd levels to be a little better. And now we go into summer. Summer's hard, because like I said earlier, summer is typically the busier time of the year. So I like to think about the very end of August, right before kids go back to school, when people are finishing up their school shopping, getting the kids ready, getting themselves back into a schedule. If you can go that time, it's definitely warm if you're okay with the heat but you're not gonna find the levels that you are 4th of July weekend, uh, two weeks after school lets out because you wanna be, you wanna think about times of the year that other people aren't going. Now, a couple things when it comes to picking time of year that you need to consider. First thing is book early. Walt Disney World Resorts, not, and I'm not talking the packages that have the dining plan and the tickets included, that's something we'll cover in another video, but book early. Disney Resorts, if you just did a standalone room, allow you to book 499 days early. And the reason I say book early, especially in those busier times, is the rooms are gonna fill up. Let's say you wanted to go in the middle of July and you had to go in the middle of July. You're gonna find, if you're looking to save cash, the Value Resorts, All Stars, Pop Century, that's where the families are gonna stay because of the price. So the earlier you book, the more likely you are to get a room. I was looking for rooms for someone uh, second weekend in May, actually, and being that close and being a busier month as far as the spring goes, I couldn't find a resort in value. So we had to look off property and so forth. So if you're looking to stay on property, definitely book early. Other thing is look at special events. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, all the different festivals. So you've got food and wine, flower garden, that kind of thing. Those are gonna impact crowd size. Also look at marathon weekends. They happen from what I find typically in the spring. So let's say you're in Epcot on a Friday and there's a marathon going on, it's gonna be a nightmare. There's gonna be so many people just there for the day because of the marathons. And the marathons are a big deal. Um, if you wanna run the marathon, more power to you, that's obviously the weekend of book. But if you're looking to avoid those crowns and you have the ability to make a choice, stay away from them. Also look at different openings. As an example, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, the month realistically for a while after that opens, Hollywood Studios is gonna be packed. It's gonna be ridiculous. So if you can avoid opening weekends for things like that, the Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster opening weekend in Epcot, that's gonna end up saving you a little bit of a headache avoiding the crowds. So those are just a couple of things that you really wanna look at. Another question I get asked quite often is, how are those crowd calculators online? So Crowd calculators are based off historical trends and the things that we talked about, marathon weekends, holidays, and openings. They're a good guide. Do not take them verbatim. They're not something that you wanna base your entire trip around. Now there's some other scheduling stuff that we can look at later on as far as what days of the week are better for which parks and so forth, and those come from practice. But as far as the crowd calculators in general, don't expect them to be completely on accurate. Uh, there's different things that, like, even the weather that day could impact the way the park is. So if you, I'm going to make up numbers, let's say it's a Tuesday and it says Epcot's going to be a 2. There's a possibility something's going to happen or a random fluke that that's going to be a busy park that day and there's no way to be 100% with it. So look at them, use them as a guide, but don't use them as gospel truth. Um, they, they can be a detriment if you get your mindset that, oh, I picked this part because it's gonna be so slow. Not necessarily, keep that in mind. And that's where we're gonna do it today. So I wanna say again, thank you guys for coming to visit. I hope you really enjoyed the video, gave you some good ideas. Um, if you like what we're trying to do, please feel free to go below, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification so you can get notifications for more of our videos. And we hope to talk to you soon. Thanks.